I gotta hand it to you guys, our Fidelity Super Resolution Video, or FSR, it is doing quite well when it comes to the view count, but as I was scrolling through the comment section, I noticed that you guys had one particular thread in common, and that you guys think that FSR is going to look a lot like how DLSS 1.0 rolled out, so in today's video, we're going to hop into our DeLorean, and we're gonna zoom back to 2018 in order to just determine if DLSS 1.0 was as bad as what we think. Let's charge up our flux capacitors and let's hop in. Hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a great day. Before we get to the direct comparisons of what 1.0 really looked like, I wanted to catch it, some of you guys up in case you're not aware what DLSS is. Now, deep learning super sampling is NVIDIA's technology where they take lower resolution source images and both clean it up and upscale it to our target resolutions. Now, in order to do this, they're gonna be able to take our lower resolution gameplay and pump it through their tensor cores and run it through a deep neural network in order to clean up the alias edges, as well as figure out some of those mixing pixels in order to create our larger resolution image. Now, when DLSS 1.0 came out, there were a couple asterisks and gotchas when it comes to the implementation. There were instances where if you had a high-end graphics card, turning on DLSS actually gave you slower frame rates because the games could be played at native resolution at faster rates already. And there was also instances where they locked off certain resolutions because in order for this neural network to do its job, you need a high enough base image in order to do the upsampling. But fortunately for us, when they rolled out 2.0, a lot of those asterisks were taken away. We're now able to do DLSS all the way down to 1080p, and they even unlock a couple different quality options for us to select. So if we're willing to sacrifice a little bit of quality, we can possibly get additional frame rate. And the last thing that they've updated with the 2.0, they no longer require the developers to provide source images in order for their network to learn and train itself. They're actually using a more generalized approach, which is why over the past few weeks, we've seen lots of different games starting to say that they're going to adopt the technology really quick. So this begs the question, was DLSS 1.0 really all that bad? Now, in order to address that question, let's hop into our time machine and travel back to 2018. Now, the first launch of DLSS only came in with a couple different technical demos, as well as an in-game benchmark. And slowly but surely, a couple of new games did start to come to market, but along with the adaptation of ray tracing, just the DLSS, it just was, the performance of it was giving a bad taste in a lot of reviewers' mouths. Adaptation was incredibly slow when it comes to Im implementing new games, and unfortunately with this handful of games, the results were quite mixed. Battlefield 5, you can check out Gamers Nexus's video up top. It looked really bad, the textures were incredibly muddy, and Final Fantasy 15, well, there were some people that could love it or hate it. But there were a couple games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus that the DLSS 1.0 didn't look all that bad. All these different games were based off of different engines, so their base rendering technologies could have heavily impacted how DLSS actually looked. Now, the biggest concerns with DLSS at the time were the loss of detail and clarity when it comes to thin objects, as well as the clarity and the detail that was in involved with the particular textures. As we mentioned earlier in the video, when you take a lower resolution image and upscale it to this new resolution, that deep neural network, it has to kind of guess what all of these pixels are gonna be. And with thin objects or low resolution detail, it's really easy for it to miss some of that in translation. With all these discrepancies in mind, a lot of reviewers had a lot of mixed thoughts, and of course, they're gonna be adding a lot of very strong language to their, their opinions. I'm quoting Hardware Unboxed here, DLSS is by far the worst of the two key RTX features, yikes. And then Gamers Nexus even adds, Nvidia's DLSS is the most promising aspect of RTX to date. Although it still has some problems, they are not terrible. Quality does take a hit in several instances. So despite the drama that was going on and the poor rollout of 1.0 as a technology, did DLSS 1.0 really look all that bad? Now, in order to help you guys detect the differences in all the different gameplay today, this is gonna be a 4K video. So I highly recommend you guys watch this on a TV or a computer monitor, because if you're watching this on a mobile device, it's gonna be very difficult to see the actual differences when it comes to the fine lines, the fine textures, and all the other minutia with the gameplay. And I'm also gonna be doing my best to export the video at as high of quality as I can. And with all of the quality control out of my way, we're now left to the mercy of YouTube, and hopefully it doesn't compress the snot out of this video. 
But I will say though, I am gonna provide you guys the DLSS off as well as the other options in the footage. And I'd strongly recommend y'all compare the footage to the DLSS off sections there. And the reason for that is if that image is getting compressed, most of the other images are gonna see equal levels of compression and you should still be able to detect the differences amongst the different scenes. And lastly, I'm gonna take a different approach than compared to some of the other YouTubers out there. I'm not gonna be hitting the pause button and taking any still shots and looking at them under a microscope. I'm also not gonna be zooming in at all so that we're not over analyzing anything. But if you guys wanna pixel peep and pause the footage, I highly recommend you do so. That way you can actually absorb and detect the differences as we go through the different scenes. So one last step before we get to the actual gameplay, and that is we're actually gonna train our eyes to detect the difference. In order to do that, we're gonna be using 3D Mark's DLSS benchmark because they give us access to DLSS off, uh, DLSS 1.0 and 2.0 with addition to a couple of their different presets. And I can already see you guys down in the comments saying that this is a canned benchmark and it's probably optimized heavily by Nvidia and you're probably right. Uh, but what we're doing here is actually just training our eyes so that we can see the differences in the different gameplay. And since we're at 4K, if you see any graphical stutters or frame rate skips, that's likely due to the RTX 3080 not able to keep up with the benchmark, and it's not the artifact due to DLSS. With that all out of the way, guys, let's roll the clip. Now, first thing I notice is the marble above the statues, it is definitely too sharp with DLSS 1.0. Now here on the second scene, the chandelier looks a little bit too dull with 1.0. Now as we get to the vault door, we can definitely see that the door and the security camera, they look a little bit too sharp. Now as we zoom in through the samples here, things look pretty good across the samples. Reflections do show a little bit of discrepancy across the four different samples. As we're panning across this scene, the fencing with the DLSS options, again, it looks a little over sharp. As we introduce the depth of field, it looks to impact fuzziness across the scene. And as we pan across and look towards the floor, the floor tile is definitely over sharpened. Highlights from the reflections just don't seem as crisp as DLSS off. So overall, when it comes to this particular benchmark, it looks like DLSS is overcompensating for some of the fuzziness that's in the benchmark, but it does look pretty good in my opinion. However, this benchmark loop is probably highly optimized by Nvidia, but at least we know what we should keep our eyes open for in the next couple videos. The next game on deck today is gonna to be Final Fantasy XV's benchmark mode. Now, I'm only doing the benchmark because I don't wanna pay the extra money to buy this on PC because I just don't have the time to play this game. Now, I've seen a lot of comments in other videos saying that this particular benchmark is not a good representation of DLSS because it's an on-rails benchmark and it's probably optimized by Nvidia. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm only gonna be looking at the fighting scenes because as you go through the benchmark multiple iterations, the scene looks a lot different each time you run the games. Now, when we go back into our time machine back to 2018, Gamers Nexus had a real problem with this game when it comes to the strobing effect that came in with the uh, fence posts in the early parts of the game, but they also were zooming in quite a bit in order to identify some of the discrepancies in the textures. Also, they were looking at a lot of stationary shots, so it might've be overly impacted towards the negative. When you look at Digital Foundry's opinion of the video, they found that actually the TAA solution that Square implements in Final Fantasy, it's actually not all that great. And in fact, with DLSS engaged, a lot of the artifacting we see with TAA gets disabled and it looks far superior with DLSS. However, that's what those guys think. So let's look through the benchmark 
So the first thing I want you guys to focus on here is the enemy helmets and how clear they look on the 1.0 version. It is clearly overcompensating for the fuzziness. When we switch over to the longer range gunslinger, I'm not exactly sure what the character's name is, we can notice that the textures are more blurry on 1.0. If we're looking at the mech, it appears the textures are a bit softer, though it's not enough to complain about. As the main character is bouncing around, if we view into the distance, we see that that foliage, there's no real preference towards either of the settings and both are equally smudged. However, guys, after watching through this in slow motion, I gotta say, DLSS 1.0 looks really similar to the native resolution. Now with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, there's a couple of different gameplay types within the game that I think DLSS might operate differently. So we're gonna be doing both a slow paced scene as well as a fast paced scene in order to see how DLSS impacts both of those scenarios. As we go through the slow scene, we do lose a little bit of detail on the back wall and bricks. Though, as we look towards the ground, the texture around Laura Croft here, it looks pretty spot on. As we look into the distance, the tree leaves look a little bit blurrier. And if you manage to hit the pause button towards the end of the loop, the text on the bag are a bit blurrier. However, guys, when we're watching this at speed, I would say that both solutions look pretty darn close. Now the first thing that jumps out to me is that the billboard here, it loses a lot of detail in the patina and the rust that's coming on the billboard. Also, as we're jumping through here, we see that the distant foliage, it does look slightly less sharp, though this could be due to the weather. However, similar as we saw with the slow gameplay, the immediate detail around Lara, it does look pretty good. And just as we saw with the Final Fantasy XV demo, with these faster paced action scenes, it's really difficult to tell the difference between DLSS Off and DLSS 1.0. Now, fortunately for us, there is one game on the market that actually has all of the different modes enabled. Unfortunately, it's actually in two games, and that's with Metro Exodus. Now, the first one we're looking at is Metro Exodus Standard Edition, and they only have access to the DLSS 1.0 specification. As we go through the foliage here, I want us to notice the bus's texture. It does appear slightly less pronounced with the DLSS 1.0. And as we're walking through the forest here, there is a variety of the foliage, both in the fore, mid, and the background. The distance foliage though, it all kind of looks like it merges together. And the closer foliage, it lacks the depth and clarity at times, though at other times, it looks a little bit better than the native resolution. As we go towards the bridge here, the distant hill loses a lot of coloration and the subtle textures with the 1.0, and we see that same issue with the rail cards. As we're crossing the bridge, the sandbags lose that pronounced center rib. As we're going through this neat little path, do highlight that the tree bark also loses its depth. And if you manage to pause the video in time, the quality of the character sprites of that uh, person that's on patrol, it does look a bit more softer with the DLSS 1.0. Now with the Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, 4A Games actually rewrote their graphical rendering engine in order to better incorporate ray tracing as well as DLSS into their engine. And that's gonna unfortunately make it not comparable with our 1.0 results. However, we still can see just how DLSS impacts the scenes overall, and we can also compare to see if some of the issues with 1.0, they get addressed with this newer version. Let's roll the clip. We're gonna be running the same benchmark loop as our 1.0 rule, and if you look at the quality mode here, it looks like a lot of the detail is retained from our native resolution output. However, the performance mode, it does seem to struggle a bit, especially when we look at the distant tree bark. Now, as we approach the hill from our 1.0, guys, it looks significantly better when compared with both of the different DLSS options. Overall, the textures from the scrap metal and the patina, it looks just so much more clear. Overall, the quality mode, it is very similar to the native render, but performance mode, it's not all that bad at all.
So the last game I wanted to take a look at today is F1 2020. Now, it does not have DLSS 1.0 support, but there is a surprising inclusion in here, and that is the Fidelity FX upscaling technology. Let's be clear, this is not FSR, but it is interesting to see that some of AMD's older technology, it is in current generation games, and I wanted to see just what it looked like compared to DLSS 2.0. One thing that's blatantly obvious here is we are playing a fast paced game with incredibly high frame rates, so it is very difficult to tell the quality of what's going on in the scene. However, if we focus in on the car models, we see much less aliasing with the car models on the DLSS. With AMD, we do notice the blockiness from the different edges, but is it that big of a difference? However, as we zoom across this track, we do lose a lot of the foliage detail and we lose a lot of the detail when it comes to the chain link and the fencing, but we see that same effect with the native resolution. And the other thing here is the frame rate that we actually see. I think with DLSS, we got right around 140 FPS and AMD solution with their Fidelity FX upscaling, we get 170 FPS at 4K. So this technology is very promising for AMD, and as long as they're able to keep this sort of quality with their technology, this is a pretty promising result for people that are gonna be using FSR in their games. So what do you guys think about DLSS 1.0? Does it look as bad as what we were led to believe? In my opinion, without hitting the pause button or zooming in in, in this actual gameplay footage, I think that 1.0 looks really close to the native resolution renders and is actually quite comparable to 2.0 in some instances. However, let's keep in mind we are playing at 4K here, so we are using the highest possible input resolution into the deep neural network on Nvidia's hardware, which will give us the best results. <laughs> Fortunately though, with all the asterisks implemented with 1.0, we are able to sidestep some of those lower resolution inputs. And keep in mind guys, 1.0 is a relic of the past. Games like Control and any of the games we've seen in the press releases in the past couple weeks, they are migrating to the 2.0 specification. And if you compare that to the footage we saw in today's video, that looks pretty dang close, especially DLSS quality mode when compared to the native resolution. Now let's circle back to some of the FSR comments from the beginning of the video. Do I think that FSR is gonna be comparable against DLSS 1.0? Well, until we get additional footage from AMD, hopefully actual gameplay footage, that kind of a conclusion, I don't think it's a safe thing to say because I don't want to set us up for a disappointment because, you know, FSR really isn't meant to compete on a quality level with DLSS. If we go back to Moore's Law's Dead's latest podcast, he mentions that FSR's main goal is just to increase the frame rate for their users and it's not really gonna be competitive when it comes to quality. So I'm gonna reserve judgment on that particular issue for a future video and when we get actual gameplay footage from AMD. And that's the video guys, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments if I should change some of the formatting here or if there's a different type of approach you'd like me to take. I'm always looking to improve on my videos in order to make you guys more informed on the tech you're using for your gaming. So I appreciate y'all, hope y'all have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one.